Hi, my name is Liz Rice. I'm Chief Open Source Officer at ISOvalent, which is the company that originally created the Cilium networking project. And today I'm going to be talking about eBPF, which is the technology that underpins Cilium. And I'm going to be talking about why eBPF is a much better model than the sidecar model for instrumenting our containerized applications. So my name's Liz, as I said, I uh, work at ISOvalent. I've also done a lot of work with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and I've been involved in the world of containers and Cloud Native for several years. Uh, I've written some books around container security and also about this technology eBPF that I'm going to be talking about today. So I really wanted to start by just making sure we're all on the same page about what a sidecar container is, what the sidecar model is. And let's go back to the motivations for creating that model in the first place. Back in the day, if we wanted to add instrumentation like logging or tracing or security into our apps, we had to add that code directly into the application code. We'd typically do that by importing common library code but you'd need a library for every language that you use for your different applications. And that means there might be subtle differences in the implementations for different languages, not to mention it's more code to maintain. So as we move to containerization and we move to the cloud native model, it became possible to separate out that common functionality into separate containers that all our apps could use, regardless of what language they're written in. In Kubernetes, we run those instrumentation containers alongside our apps by injecting them into each pod. So that container is called the sidecar container, and this is called the sidecar model. So our sidecar containers sit within the same pod as the application container, sharing some of its resources, which is how it can do its job of instrumenting that application. And this sidecar model allows us to get that same tooling behavior into all of our pods. It's worth noting that the sidecar container shares the same life cycle as the application container. And that has a couple of consequences. Firstly, if you want to roll out new tooling, you're going to have to restart all of the pods that are going to be instrumented. So if you want to upgrade your logging or you want to change your tracing or your security tooling, you have to restart all the pods to get that change. There's also the complexity of getting all of the containers within a pod to start up without getting in each other's way. And this was actually one of the most frequently cited concerns when in the Cilium project, we surveyed users about sidecar usage. So here are a few quotes that we got from that survey. And as you can see, a lot of people who've tried sidecars found that in reality, it can be quite hard to operate in this model, particularly if your networking is relying on it, as is the case with service mesh. Is there a better approach? What other part of the system could we use to observe everything that's happening in all our applications without having to deal with the complexities of injecting sidecar containers? And the answer is the kernel. I love this cartoon that Nathan LeClaire did quite a few years ago now with Tux driving a sidecar that's labeled with eBPF. And as you probably know, eBPF is a technology that allows us to dynamically program the way that the kernel behaves. And this makes it an incredibly powerful platform for writing common tooling and instrumentation that we want to be able to see and influence what's happening across all our applications. Let's take a look at why the kernel is the ideal place to run common tooling. So the kernel is the part of the operating system that interfaces with hardware. Whenever your applications want to access files or send or receive messages or allocate memory, they have to ask the kernel to do that on their behalf using the syscall interface. The kernel is also responsible for coordinating different processes and for checking permissions and privileges. 
in Kubernetes, our applications are running as containers inside pods, but there's still just one kernel per virtual machine or physical machine. And that machine, that kernel is shared by all the processes and all the containers, regardless of which pod they're running in. So all the applications running on a given Kubernetes host machine share that one kernel. And that kernel is involved whenever any of those applications do anything interesting. It's also involved whenever Kubernetes creates and destroys pods and containers. So the kernel is aware of everything that's happening on that machine, inside those pods or outside those pods. And that makes it an ideal place to have instrumentation. If we use eBPF to add that instrumentation by injecting programs into the kernel, they can be aware of everything. Now for a sidecar container to observe or interact with application containers, it has to run inside the Kubernetes pod so that it shares Linux namespaces with those application containers and can actually affect what's happening in that container. And to do that, it has to be created by injecting some additional lines into the YAML that defines the pod. And that has to be done for every app that needs to be instrumented. So every pod that you create has to have the YAML that defines the sidecar container. In contrast with eBPF, we don't need to make any YAML changes at all. We just load eBPF programs into the kernel and attach them to events. And we don't have to make any changes to the apps or their configuration at all. In fact, we don't even need to restart our pods. As soon as we attach an eBPF program to an event, like a syscall or a function in the kernel, it will immediately start acting whenever that event occurs irrespective of which user space process caused it. So our running applications immediately get the benefit of the observability or the security or the networking capabilities that we've implemented using those eBPF programs. By avoiding having to modify or even restart our application pods, this reduces those operational complexity concerns that we heard about. And it's also more secure because it means every process on that machine is instrumented automatically. So an eBPF observability tool or security tool will immediately see any activity, even if it's from a malicious process, if it triggers an event that triggers the eBPF program. And an eBPF security tool will immediately be able to protect against malicious behavior, even if it's running directly on the host rather than in a pod. So we've seen that having a common life cycle for all the containers in a pod leads to operational complexity concerns. And this is compounded by the need to ensure that all the apps you want to be instrumented get their YAML updated. In the sidecar model, we've injected our sidecar containers into every pod so that they can affect what's happening in that pod, for example, a network proxy sidecar shares the network namespace with the application so that it can intercept every network packet. But we're using these namespaces and C groups to deliberately isolate pods from each other. That's the whole point of containerization. We're isolating our applications from each other and from the host. And that means the sidecar containers are also isolated from each other. And that leads us to another set of concerns that users told us about with the sidecar model, which is the sidecar model can lead to a lot of duplicated resources, which in turn leads to significant overheads in terms of memory and storage and CPU usage. If our sidecars can't easily share resources with each other, they will typically hold their own records for state and configuration. And that can often lead to multiple copies of the same information or broadly the same information. In eBPF, we have structures that are called eBPF maps that are data stores accessible by eBPF programs and also by user space programs. 
So we can have a set of shared information about configuration or about state that can be accessed by the eBPF programs and also by any user space agents that might be part of that eBPF application as a whole. It's very common, taking Cilium as an example, we would have a user space agent running on every node, which manages and coordinates the eBPF programs. As you can imagine, removing the duplicate copies of information can have a significant effect on the resources required. So far, I've talked about concerns about the sidecar model that apply to any kind of instrumentation, whether that's observability or security or networking. But there is an additional concern when it comes to sidecars that perform networking function, and that is the additional latency that they add. And that's particularly interesting to us, I think, here at P99. So let's talk a little bit about the latency cost of adding network proxies into each container as a sidecar. The proxy is here to intercept every single packet going into or out of the application. Although the sidecar shares the same networking namespace as the app, getting a packet from one to the other requires traversing the network stack. So every packet has to pass through the networking stack three times to leave the application, get through the proxy and get out of the pod's namespace. And from there, it can be sent out to another destination. That's particularly wasteful if you have two pods on the same node because the pod has to take, or the packet rather, has to take that convoluted path to get to its destination application as well. So it has to pass through two proxies. Using eBPF, we can make a much more direct connection and still pass through a proxy. And it's and not only not every packet needs to pass through that proxy. The proxy is only really necessary if the packet needs layer seven processing. In Cilium, by using eBPF, we can make smarter decisions to bypass the proxy if it wouldn't be having any effect anyway. In Cilium, we've pushed a significant part of the service mesh functionality into the kernel itself. And we delegate responsibility to an Envoy proxy component running in user space to handle the complexity of layer seven processing when it's necessary. As time goes on, we may well see more of this processing handled by eBPF within the kernel. And I think it will be performance that drives this move and this kind of innovation. For example, at iSurveillant, we have an in-kernel HTTP parser that gives us the layer seven visibility into network requests without having to pass packets to the user space proxy. And as you can see, it adds almost no latency to the network connection and is dramatically more performant than transitioning the packet to user space and back again so that the proxy can look at it. And it will be improvements in performance and resource consumption and complexity that create the demand to implement more and more of these features in the kernel using eBPF. And because eBPF allows us to load custom programs, we can innovate without requiring everyone on the same upstream kernel to use the same tools. We've seen how eBPF allows us to avoid a number of concerns about sidecar-based instrumentation. We can reduce operational complexity, resource usage, and improve performance. And I want to leave you with this last quote about after seeing Cilium in action, I don't think I'd ever want to use a sidecar mesh with sidecars again, a service mesh with sidecars again. You can find lots more resources about eBPF in general at ebpf.io. You'll find more information about Cilium's service mesh capabilities at cilium.io. And we also have lots of great hands-on labs at isovalent.com, where you can also download a PDF copy of my learning eBPF book. Now, I hope I've convinced you that eBPF lays a really strong foundation for implementing 
tools like networking, security, and observability. But I also hope that you're going to have lots of questions for me. So I'll see you online.